About a week ago, I made a blind test study to see whether people are able to tell the difference between analog and digital synths, and today I will be showing you the results. I also wrote a paper going into the methods I used in more detail, link is in the description, now let's get into it. So what you see here is basically the distribution of the total scores. There were 287 participants in total, and as you can see the average score is 8.784 points, with a standard deviation of 2.159. Uh, well, you don't see the standard deviation, but I calculated it. If everyone had just guessed on every question, the average score would have been 8.333 points, with a standard deviation of 1.6 to 5 points. That means the results are about 5.4% better than guessing. Furthermore, the test contains analog synths, of course, then, well, purely digital synths, so basically synths that are proud to be digital, and also virtual analog synths, so emulations of analog synths. If we take out the purely digital synths and only compare the analog and virtual analog ones, the results were only 2.8% better than guessing, which is expected. But now let's go to the interesting part, because before the blind test, I also asked every participant three questions about themselves. So you can see them here. The first one is, how much experience do you have with analog synths? How old are you? And on average, how much time a day do you spend making and listening to music? And the reason I asked them was obviously to see how they correlate with the answers of the participants. So first, here are just the correlations with the total amount of points. I'll do it on a per question basis right after. So as you can see, for example, here on the x-axis, you see the um, experience they have with analog synths. And on the y-axis, the total amount of points. If you just judge by the rule of thumb, there isn't such a great correlation here. The same with the average time spent with music. But actually, with the age, I can see a downwards trend. Like it doesn't look, it doesn't look unreasonable to assume that there is actually a downwards trend. But of course, we don't want to rely on the rule of thumb. I also actually um, did a fit function. I assumed a linear fit, and as you can see, yeah, here for the experience with since it really isn't like the error is greater than the fit parameter value. The same with his time spent with music. But for age, it actually looks pretty convincing. Like the fit parameter value is minus 3.8 with an error of 0.4. Yeah, I think I think that that's pretty okay. And I also want to point out that even though the other two correlations are really kind of weak, they at least go into the expected direction. So the points get larger when the experience with synths also gets larger and the amount of points gets larger when the time spent with music gets greater. So even though we can't draw any conclusions out of it exactly, it still fits into the picture. So after seeing that there seems to be at least some kind of correlation between points and, well, uh, skill or ability, we obviously want to know in which questions specifically they performed better. So I made something called a correlation matrix, or well, actually I'm not sure if it's really called that, but what I'm sure about is that you can see all the correlations right there on a per question basis. What this means is that a value closer to one means a more positive correlation, while a value close to minus one means a negative correlation and values that are like 0.21 those are basically not a correlation at all. I also have to point out that even if the value is like 1 that doesn't mean that it makes a big difference for example it could be only a very small difference but a very strong correlation still. Let's look at all the correlations where the absolute of the coefficient is over 0.75. Uh, you can check the link in the description and read all this text I wrote about it here. But basically how I interpreted all this stuff is, first of all, age seems to be a pretty strong factor that influences how well you can tell them apart. Especially if it's a very detailed and high frequency rich sound. 
like for example in number 10 which was an fm lead so it's basically very high frequency rich and detailed and as you can see it's basically a perfect correlation like it literally doesn't get any better than this also number nine which was a resonant filter sweep over white noise and number three which was only white noise like although number three isn't that perfect but i think it's still good enough and especially that it falls right down for people over the age of 51 i think it's pretty interesting also very interesting is number seven where the average score actually gets better when people get older and honestly i have no idea how to interpret that uh, coincidentally or well maybe not coincidentally uh, this is only the only question where i lied to you yes that's right i lied to you because in the study it said there's only one digital synth but in only this question there were actually two digital synths and then it's also the question that was the only one this guy was sure about yeah i mean honestly i have no idea how to interpret that Please just let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Yeah, and let's go on. Then while time spent with music and experience with analog synths have some somewhat convincing correlations, it's a lot harder to explain them. For example, why is there a correlation between time spent with music and question 3, which was just white noise, but there isn't with experience because like the most obvious correlation would be that uh, you can better tell noise apart when you heard more analog noise and more digital noise and then you can just tell them apart. But if it doesn't correlate with experience with analog synths, that explanation just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, it's kind of harder to explain in those cases. Okay, before we get to the conclusion, let's go over the error analysis very quickly. So first, yeah, I only use three different analog synths, which doesn't perfectly represent all, all analog synths. The questions weren't randomized. I didn't control for what device people are doing the study on. 300 submissions is, well, I think it's pretty awesome actually, but of course more people would have been even better. And I can't say for sure if the fit function I used is the correct one because I just assumed a linear one, but there's no way I way I can actually know. Also, some things that I don't think are problems, but have been frequently brought up. Or well, actually, read that to yourself if you want. Let's go to the conclusion. And the result, well, it honestly kind of surprised me. But I have to say that I definitely see reason to believe that at least some people can sometimes tell the difference between analog and digital synths. Like, first of all, simply the average score, but also the correlations suggest that being able to distinguish between them takes some kind of, well, ability or prowess, which suggests that there actually is one, because otherwise there wouldn't be that correlation. Also, by far the strongest correlation is with age, like the other two weren't that convincing to me, but with age, definitely, which kind of suggests that the difference is maybe something you just like sometimes hear when you have good ears and focus on it. I don't know, honestly, let me know what you think. But yeah, there you have it. Links to the raw data, the Jupyter Notebook, the Mathematica file, the study with stats and this paper is all in the description. I hope you enjoyed it and until next time.